Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about rhombi and squares. So previously to this lesson, we learned about parallelograms, we also learned about rectangles, and now we're getting into rhombi and squares. And we need to know some definitions and then we're gonna take a look at some more problems. So first of all, a rhombi is the plural word of a rhombus. And a rhombus is a parallelogram with all four sides congruent, plus the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So this is interesting, right? We already know about a parallelogram that the diagonals bisect each other, but now we're also going to say, hey, the diagonals are also perpendicular to each other, as you can see in this diagram here. And it says each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So there's a lot of interesting stuff here. So think about a parallelogram, but a rhombus is that all four sides are congruent. The diagonals, not only bisect each other, but are perpendicular to each other. And the diagonals bisect all of the opposite angles. So you have a lot going on here. And if you look at it, what could you say about these four little triangles that are created now from the diagonals of a rhombus? They're actually all congruent to each other just by simply angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. They all have that same set of angles and a, an, an included side, sorry. Um, and so you actually have four congruent angles now set up, which is pretty cool. Now let's take a look at a problem here. It says if the measure of WZX, so this angle here, is 39.5, find the measure of ZYX, so this entire angle here. Okay, so definitely some things to think about. Now, what we know is that uh, the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other. So if this is 39.5, then this is also 39.5. And there's definitely a couple ways to get to this angle, but something we can think about is, okay, well, I definitely do have a right angle here, right? Because the diagonals bisect each other. And so this is a right angle. And so now if I know that that's a right angle and this is 39.5, I can do 90 plus 35. 39, 90 plus 39.5, excuse me. Subtract that from 180. And that would mean that one of these little angles here is 50.5. Okay, so what I did is I added up 39.5 and a 90 degree angle and I found that this was, and then subtracted it from 80, so this is 50.5, and then I'd have to double it because these two angles are congruent to each other, and 50.5 doubled is 101. So what you can see I actually set up here is I said two times the entire angle of 39.5, which is basically what I did, plus this entire angle would add up to 180. So this would be the other way to do it. Consecutive angles in a parallelogram, and now all, of course a rhombus, because a rhombus is the type of parallelogram, are going to always be supplementary. So what this is saying here is the entire angle of two times 39.5 plus this entire blue angle here should be 180, and notice I get the exact same answer. Another problem here says if Wx is 8x minus five, so this is 8x minus 5, and WZ is 6x plus 3, find x. Now this is a rhombus, and what we did learn is that all the sides of a rhombus are congruent, so it means that these two measures are going to be set equal to each other. And then we're able to solve for x. Okay, so now for moving on to a square. So a square now is a rhombus. So think about this, guys. We started with a parallelogram. We then talked about a specific type of parallelogram is a rhombus. A rhombus has four congruent sides, diagonal and perpendicular, all that good stuff. And now I'm telling you that a square is a particular type of rhombus with four right angles. So think about it. A square has all four sides are congruent. We know that about a square, which is part of the definition of a rhombus. So it's a rhombus with the extra right angles in the corners. And this is just a really very light little Venn diagram of saying, you know, rectangles and rhombi. So rectangles include squares, a rhombus includes a square, and basically the combination of a rectangle and a rhombus is a square. So if I take all the properties of a rectangle, all the properties of a rhombus, put them together, I basically get what a square is.
Okay, rectangle, rhombus, or square. So if I give you four ordered pairs and I ask you to plot them, and it looks like this, I'm going to show you how we do a coordinate proof in order to prove whether or not this is a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square. So first of all, to prove it is a rectangle, remember, we have to prove that it's a parallelogram. And so if I want to prove it's a parallelogram, I have to prove that the opposite sides have the same slope. And not only do these have the opposite sides have the same slope, but then the slopes have to be negative reciprocals of each other. So if I have undefined in zero, we know that those are negative reciprocals of each other. So this figure definitely meets the qualifications of being a rectangle. Now, to prove if it's a rhombus, there's definitely different things we can do here for sure. Um, but what we can do is we can figure out the slope of the diagonal. And so here, if the slope of my diagonal, and I'm just going to color it in for us from A to C, if it is a negative reciprocal from B to D, then that's going to confirm with me that not only are my opposite sides parallel to each other, which we proved from the rectangle, and that those are 90 degree angles, right? This is what we proved from the rectangle. But if the diagonals also create a right angle, then it's definitely a rhombus. So the slope from A to C is 1. The slope from B to D is negative 1. Those are definitely your negative reciprocals, and therefore it does qualify as a rhombus. So this is a rectangle, and it's a rhombus. And if it's a rectangle and a rhombus, then it's definitely going to be a square. It meets both requirements. Now, if I have a figure and it qualifies as a rectangle, but it doesn't meet the qualifications of a rhombus, then there's no way it could be a square. So here are two additional problems. Determine whether A, B, C, D is a rectangle, rhombus, or square. List all that apply. Uh, so if you wanted to try these out on your own, you certainly could, or of course, just follow along with me. So for this first one, if I go ahead and I plot my points, I first want to check whether or not it is a rectangle. So I'm going to find the slopes of all my sides. So the slope of A, B, and C, D are both two. So that tells me that those two sides are parallel. The uh, slopes of BC and AD are both negative one half. So that means that these two sets of sides are parallel. And then I look at my slopes, two and negative one half are negative reciprocals of each other, which means that they are definitely creating 90 degree angles here, which means it is for sure a rectangle. So rectangle, definitely yes. Now if I wanted to test out my slopes of my diagonals in order to check to see if it is a square, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw my diagonals. And we can already take a good look at what these slopes are. So definitely A to C has a slope of 0. If I wanted to calculate the slope from B to D, that's going to be a slope of negative 4 thirds. So my diagonals definitely do not intersect at a right angle, which means it does not meet the qualifications of a rhombus. And therefore, if it's not a rhombus, then there's no way it could be a square. So it's just a rectangle. This one here. Okay, so I'm going to follow the same procedures. I'm going to go ahead and calculate my slopes. So side AB and side CD both have a slope of 1, so they are parallel to each other. AD and BC both have a slope of negative 1. And you guys know the deal at this point. 1 and negative 1 are definitely negative reciprocals of each other, which proves that these are right angles because all the sides are perpendicular to each other. Well, consecutive sides. Now if I want to prove that it is a rhombus. So I have to take a look at my diagonals. So AC definitely has a slope of 0. BD has a slope that's undefined, and we've seen this so many times now already. That means it definitely is a rhombus because those are negative reciprocals, and therefore it's also a square. So this one would be all three, just like the original problem was as well. So now, some proofs. This one says parallelogram. Um, we have a parallelogram. It's A, B, C, D. So that's good to know. So it's telling us that we do have a parallelogram. A, B is congruent to B, C. So we are just told that, as what we know, we need to prove that this is, in fact, a rhombus. Okay. All right, so we have parallelogram A, B, C, D. We're also told that side A, B is congruent to side B, C. So, of course, we're going to state what is given. 
And now think about it. The definition of a parallelogram tells us what about our sides. It tells us that opposite sides are congruent. So I would be able to say, okay, well, I know that AB is congruent to DC. And I also know that AD is congruent to BC, right? Because opposite sides are congruent to each other. And then what I should be able to then say is, okay, well, AB is congruent to BC, but I'm also saying AB is congruent to DC. So notice they both have AB in common. And then my second part of the statement, notice I have BC and BC in common. So something I would want to then say is, well, AB is congruent to BC, segment BC, and segment BC is congruent to segment AD. And we know that that's also going to be congruent to segment DC. They're all congruent to each other. And it's just the transitive property in one long statement. Um, and just to kind of show you again where that's coming from. So AB is congruent to BC. BC from here is congruent to AD. And also AB we have here is congruent to that DC. So they're all connected to each other. And therefore, ABCD is a rhombus because when you have four sides that are congruent, it's the definition of a rhombus. Okay, here are two other proofs for us. It says parallelogram ABCD. So, okay, so this is telling us we do have a parallelogram. Uh, side AE is equal to EC and DE is equal to EB. So all four of these segments are congruent to each other. We have to prove that ABCD is a rectangle. Okay, so of course we list what we're given first. Now, when we're talking about all the side measures of the sides being equal to each other, um, we want to then talk about, okay, well, we know that AE plus EC is equal to AC, right? The entire diagonal. Because remember, when we're proving um, a rectangle or we're proving a square or things like that, the diagonals are going to tell us so much. So AE plus EC is equal to AC. And then DE plus EB is equal to DB, okay? So we have these two segments add up to get one diagonal. These two segments add up to get the other diagonal. But now think about what we know. We know that these are all equal to each other. So AE plus EC is equal to DB. Okay, I can swap out AE is equal to DE right here by substitution. EB gets replaced with EC because we know that they're all equal to each other. And then I can just bring down my DB. I would also then be able to say that AC is equal to DB because I know that AE plus EC equals AC. And therefore I can substitute AE plus EC for that AC also by substitution. And now look what I have here. I've got, I'm saying my diagonals are now equal to each other. I would then talk about the segments being congruent. And if you have diagonals that are congruent to each other, then it means that this quadrilateral is in fact a rectangle because when you have congruent diagonals, that's your definition of a rectangle. Okay, this one here, parallelogram ABCD. It says AC is congruent to... Uh, segment AC is congruent to segment DB. So this is actually telling us right off the bat that our diagonals are congruent to each other. It also says that AEB is 90 degrees, okay, which we know we're going to have to then say is a right angle and talk about it being perpendicular. Okay, so we have our given. We're going to be able to say that ABCD is definitely a rectangle because the fact that we're given the diagonals are congruent. Now remember, we have to prove to get it to be a square that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. And we're told that this measure of this angle is 90, um, but we want to make sure we put in the proof that we say, okay, well, that angle is definitely a right angle because the definition of a right angle is that it's 90 degrees, which then is going to let us say that these two diagonals are perpendicular to each other. 
So it seems kind of funny that we're given the 90, but we have to work back into it because the definition of a uh, square is that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other and we need to make sure we get to that specific statement. Okay, because right angles create perpendicular lines. It's almost like we're so, we did the opposite before in previous proofs. We would start with perpendicular lines, determine it was a right angle, and then call it 90 degrees. So therefore, if I have perpendicular diagonals, that's enough information to tell me that it is a rhombus. And then if I have a quadrilateral that is both a rectangle and a rhombus, we know that that means then it is a square. So we had to use the same thing we were using in our coordinate proof into this actual two column proof um, to be able to guide us through. I know there's a lot of information here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.